Hello there and welcome. Today I'm going to be showing you how to install the latest version of Zabbix onto the latest version of Ubuntu server. At the time of this recording, the latest version of Zabbix is 6.0. The latest version of Ubuntu would be 20.04 LTS. This setup can be a little tricky to get going, but fear not. Just go ahead and let me guide you through this process and I'll have you up and running in no time. Let's jump straight into it. Okay, I'm going to try and do this as quickly as possible. First things first, you're going to download the Ubuntu 20.04.3 server ISO file. Just get it off Google. Next, you're going to fire up your hypervisor, your Type 2 hypervisor of choice. I'm using Hyper-V on Windows Server 2016. I'm going to create a new virtual machine. And I'm going to basically hit next through most of this. A lot of the defaults are satisfactory. I'm going to go ahead and give this 2 gigs of RAM. Do next on that. I already have a server LAN that I created. And the name, you can call it whatever you want. I'm going to go ahead and give this 40 gigabytes worth of hard drive space. In this case, I'm going to specify the ISO file, the Ubuntu server ISO file from my desktop. I'm going to do next on that and do finish. All right, next up, I'm going to start the virtual machine and I'm gonna to go to connect in order to see the console. And this is going to start the Ubuntu Live CD and go through the install. You'll wind up at this page. I'm gonna go ahead and select English to continue. Um, here I recommend updating to new installer, but since this is demonstration, I'm not going to waste time to update. The English keyboard layout is fine for me. I'm going to select done on that. Here you get an opportunity to assign a static IP to your server. I highly recommend. That way it's easily accessible via SSH and your IP address is not changing on you. So just go over to ETH0, hit enter, go down to edit IPv4, hit enter again. You're going to drop down here and select manual. And you're going to begin to fill out your IP information. When you're done, it'll look something like this. Go ahead and save that. And we'll proceed to the next phase of the install. It's going to apply changes. Then you'll click done. And here, not worried about a proxy address. I'm going to hit done on that. Uh, the mirror address, default's fine. Hit done on that. And it's going to this area. We're going to use the entire disk. Make sure there's an X there. And we're going to do done on that. Don't need to change any other parameters there. The defaults are fine. Here, file system, defaults are fine. I'm going to go and hit done on this. And it's going to warn you about writing to the entire disk. Go ahead and click continue. That's what we want. And I believe from here you're going to enter your name, your server's name. I'm going to pick a username, set a password. Basic stuff here. Once you got that filled out, go ahead and click or go ahead and select it done. Uh, here you do want to install an open SSH server. Um, this is going to be our primary means of interfacing with this server because it is a headless server. There's no GUI. But don't worry because it's literally just going to run Zabbix and you honestly don't even need a GUI for that. Here you can add some additional um, applications. Not for me. For demonstration I just hit next on that. And here it's going to proceed to install the system. So go grab a beer, get some lunch, get some coffee, take a break. This should probably take anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes. Of course, I'm going to skip ahead and go on to the next phase. You'll get an install complete notification up at the top. 
Now, as you can see, it's downloading and installing security updates, which again, I highly recommend let that finish. But since this is for demonstration purpose, I'm not going to allow that. It's just gonna suck up more time. So what I'm gonna do is forcefully shut down my VM to interrupt those security updates. Okay, so once my virtual machine is off, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it back on. And the next phase, we're going to be SSHing to it. And as you can see, I'm pinging it right here, waiting for it to come back online. And um, we're going to pull up the Zabbix install directions from the net right off their website. Um, it's pretty straightforward, though it is missing some essential commands, I will say, one or two. Um, here you want to select your proper Linux distribution because Zabbix does require a Linux distribution. It sits on top of it or installs to it. And in our case, as you know, we're going to be using Ubuntu, and this is Zabbix version 6.0, the latest one, 6.0 LTS. Let's go ahead and select Ubuntu. We're using the OS version 20.0.4. MySQL and Apache is fine. What I'm going to do is SSH into my Ubuntu server now using PuTTY. So I'm just typing the IP address. You shouldn't have to change any other parameters. Default parameters work fine. Go ahead and accept the host key here. We know it's a trusted source. It's our own server. Go ahead and proceed to log in with your user and password that you created during initial setup. Now let me organize these windows a little bit. And we are going to go ahead and proceed to start copying and pasting some commands. So we're going to run this we get. I'm going to do a sudo on that first, and then I'm going to paste in that we get command. It's going to ask me for my root password, enter that in. And as you can see, it went through some downloading and processing there. We're going to sudo again, paste in the next command. OK, that one completed successfully. And then we're going to end here with a sudo apt update. OK, so far so good. This one's taking a little bit longer. It's updating those repositories. As you can see, we got an error here. Updating such a reposit repository can't be done securely. So as you can see, when I run this next command, it's going to fail. And the reason why is because that last sudo apt update command failed out. So it's due to certificate error, weird bug. It doesn't doesn't um, list this on Zabbix's site, but there's something about the certificate not being trusted, so we can't download that uh, focal release. So, what I did was I took to the Googles, did a, did a little research, and fortunately, there was a website who found a solution to this. So once again, I've highlighted those errors. And here is the genius who found the solution. Awesome. Thank you so much, BR Hunt. And I'm highlighting the solution right here. Um, so we basically need to comment out the DST certificate. Um, you can use Nano if you want. I'm going to go ahead and use Vim. Actually, I'm not even sure if Nano is installed on here by default, so just go with Vim. And we're going to open up this file, and we're going to look for the DST certificate. Okay, there it is, back up toward the top. And it's actually called, uh, where are you at? There it is, DST root CA X3. So I'm just going to hit insert. And I'm going to put the pound sign to comment that out. As you can see, it turns blue. Now I'm going to return and run that sudo apt update again. And as you can see this time, it's going to complete without any errors. Oh, actually, it's still having an error because I forgot to update CA certificates. And then I tried to issue that command with run in front of it. Um, Got to get rid of that. 
So I replaced that with sudo. Now I updated certificates. Now I'm running the sudo apt update again. And this time you'll see it complete successfully. Great. Now we're going to circle back and run the install Zabbix server front end agent command once again. We're going to sudo that. And we're going to say yes to that. Okay. And this shouldn't take very long. There we go. I just let that run through and we should be good there. Now what we're going to do is create the required SQL database. Now, however, this is another um, step that is missed in the directions here because MySQL doesn't exist on the server. And if you try and run sudo MySQL, it's not going to find anything. Also, we don't need to run MySQL uroot because we're already root. So what I'm going to do, though, is install sudo apt-get MySQL server. Uh, sorry, sudo apt-get install MySQL server. We're going to say yes to that. So yes, this is a mandatory step here in order to install MySQL onto the Ubuntu server. And we'll let that run through. This shouldn't take very long. I'm going to do sudo mysql to enter. It aired out. And this is probably because SQL Server is not started yet. So I'm going to issue a sudo mysql uh, system ctl start mysql. There we go. Now I'm going to do sudo mysql. As you can see, we dropped into the mysql prompt. Now we can proceed to copy and paste these commands. First one, we're going to create the Zabbix database. And we're going to create the user along with the password. If you want your password, um, you will set it here. So you're going to change it to whatever you want. Um, here, I'm just using password, the default one, um, just for demonstration purpose. But set your database password there because that actually creates the database user and the user's password. Next, we're going to grant the user all privileges to the database with the next command. Great, and we're going to do quit on that. And next thing we're going to do is import the schema data into the database. So this is basically like all the tables and necessary information um, in order for the database to populate and work correctly. So we're going to copy that. I'm going to do a sudo on this zcat command. And this can be a little tricky. Here you're going to enter your database password that you used for Zabbix. So in my case it was just password. You do not enter your um, server username or uh, server password. So this part doesn't give you any output so it can be a little confusing but what I want to show you is I'm going to get another session going and how we can sort of proactively check and see if the data the schema data is populating in the database so just let this run could take a few minutes but I'm gonna get another SSH session going and I'm going to do uh, pop into SQL again and I'm going to show databases and I'm going to select the Zabbix database and I'm going to do show tables. Now here you can see um, if the schema data was not imported this would be zero. As you can see there's 173 rows so it looks like it's about done. However the way to know that it's completed is in my other SSH session it should drop you out to the prompt once it's been completed. Um, as you can see, has not brought me to the prompt yet. So there we go. Now it has been completed. So once you're back to the prompt, you're good. I'm going to go ahead and quit out of this other session. Um, and we should be good. Oh, we do need to set the database password. So once again, we're going to do a sudo vim on that. We're going to edit this file. You're going to look for the uncommented username because the password is um, usually right below that or not too far below it. There it is. So we're going to uncomment that. We're going to set the database password. Mine was just password, If you, in case you remember. 
that's what I used we're gonna do a colon WQ to write quit and we're going to restart the Apache server with that command um, you might want to issue that with a sudo command just so it goes smoother yeah let's let's redo that right now I get a sudo in front of that and run it again okay great that went smoother and then we're going to enable the service I believe this is so we're gonna do a sudo on that enable that and alright now we should be able to hit the front end so the way we do that is just go ahead and head over to your browser in my case I'm gonna open a new tab and uh, we're gonna go over to the server IP address uh, forward slash Zabbix you have to get that part in there otherwise it will not load successfully alright here we are this is our Zabbix server Zabbix 6.0 okay great as you can see all of our prereqs are shaken out which is beautiful let's go ahead and hit next on that and this is pretty straightforward information here we're gonna use Zabbix and then password for password that's what I set mine as and just do next on that here we're gonna select the time zone and in my case it's America Los Angeles Server name, I'm just going to call this Zabbix. Um, let's go with the dark theme. I'm going to do next on that. And a drum roll, please. Ta-da! Congratulations, you have successfully installed Zabbix front end. Awesome. We are good to go. Let's go ahead and hit finish. And it should take us to our dashboard. Well, to the login page here, it's admin with a capital A is the default, and the password is Zabbix, all lowercase. Those are the default credentials. Obviously, you can change that once you get into the uh, dashboard here. And there you have it, folks. That is a Zabbix successful install on Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. Now, if this video has helped you out in any way, shape, or form, please drop a like and subscribe, share the video, and it would be much appreciated as I'm really trying to grow this channel. Now, if you have any questions about your Zabbix or Ubuntu server installs, leave the question in the comment and I'll do my best to help you out. I'll see you next time.